Reglazing your glasses can be a great idea. Or sometimes it can be a terrible one. So in this video, I'm going to be talking you through the pros and the cons of reglazing your glasses with new prescription lenses. So hi, I'm Robert, style and vision consultant here at the Spectacle Factory. And it's my job to pair you with your perfect pair of glasses. And the perfect pair of glasses is never complete without the right lenses. You may have a pair of frames that you absolutely love, that you adore, but are they reaching their potential? Do they look as good as they could? Well, that's where reglazing comes in. It's an opportunity and a chance to upgrade your glasses with a new prescription and potentially to enhance them with new lenses. And I'm going to be explaining all of the options that are out there in which you can do that. But on the other hand, a lot of people reglaze their glasses to save money, and I get that. And sometimes that can be a really good idea. If your optician has told you that you need new prescription lenses, and you're not quite in the market to buy new frames, if you have good quality frames, why not make use of them? I totally get that. And often I'll encourage people to do it because ultimately the main aspect of your glasses is your vision. And upgrading your old glasses to have new lenses with the new prescription is better than nothing. But sometimes it can be a big mistake. If you use cheaper frames or older frames that have become brittle over time, it can be very risky. And what I see all the time are people reglazing as a money-saving exercise, which might save them a little bit in the short term, but cost them a lot more in the long term. Because you have to think, the decision you're making right now needs to last you until your new prescription, or at least that's the way that most people think. Obviously, some of us do change our glasses more regularly than that, but if you're reglazing to try and kind of get by until your next prescription change with your old frames, just bear in mind what will happen if in two, three, four months time, those frames break, both from wear and tear or from accidental damage. In terms of wear and tear, a good way to assess acetate frames is to look for any kind of whitening on the material. That usually suggests that it's starting to dry out and become brittle. And you'll see with acetate frames, when that does happen, they start to lose their shine and the material becomes a lot more coarse to the touch. So that's always a good thing to check first. But you also want to look at the hinges and make sure that the integrity of those is fine. You can usually tell just by opening and closing them that they feel you know, the right amount of stiffness, that they're not feeling too loose and they're also not feeling too tight. Hinges over time can become very stiff and that's a warning sign that maybe it's best not to use that frame because if the hinge is stiff, that means you're actually applying pressure to the material itself and that material might potentially fail. Now with metal frames, it's a good idea to look at the paintwork and just check that there's no chips and scratches on it because obviously that means they've kind of had the day and they're not gonna look good to wear on a normal day-to-day -day basis. Now assuming that your glasses are in good condition, and I really hope they are, I hope that you look after your frames, the next thing you need to ask yourself is, can I be without these glasses? Not necessarily while the optician's working on them because they might be able to do things kind of while she wait, potentially, but in terms of what would happen if I lost or broke my glasses? That's a really important question to ask yourself because I see so many people that don't think about it until it's too late. And if you're relying on just one pair of glasses and you really need your glasses, it's never a good idea to reglaze. Keep your old glasses as your spare pair. Invest in a new pair and at least then you've always got a backup. But with all of that out of the way, let's focus on the positives of reglazing because there are many. As I said, it's an opportunity to really enhance your eyewear. And we're gonna talk through some examples of where reglazing frames can completely transform them. Generally speaking, it's a good idea that when you upgrade your lenses in an old frame to change something about them, maybe add a tint. You can turn them into sunglasses or add a moderate tint to just make them that bit more interesting. And that's what I'm going to talk you through right now. So the first example that I've got is this 3D printed model from McLaren. Here we see it in the optical state and these are really cool frames. You know, the square aviator shape is very cool with the double bridge. We have the anatomical nose pads, which McLaren are becoming famous for. These are the, probably the most comfortable nose pads that you can get. And the 3D printed design with this almost side shield effect contrasts really nicely with the bladed sides and those rubber grips that keep them in place so well. As I say, this is a cool frame, but see how different the same model is 
when we add a tint. So these have a grey gradient tint with a red or ruby flash coating, which really ties in with the red elements on the arms. Of course, if you were reglazing this pair, we'd probably go for a different tint, but you probably wouldn't even believe these are the same glasses. Let's say you were bored of that frame. It's a great idea to reglaze them with a different tint combination to make them feel like a new pair. These do look entirely different than those, even though they are essentially the same glasses. You can see just how different the lens has made them and it's given them an extra utility. You know, if you were buying a new pair of glasses and you were kind of fed up with your old glasses and this was them, by transforming them with the right tint, you've now got a great pair of sunglasses as well. And that's where reglazing is the best option, in my opinion, a lot of the time anyway. So that's a great starting point. But an even more kind of classic example would be the Norton from Barton Pereira, which we see here. The Norton is a really classic round style, which looks great, looks fabulous as an optical frame. Um, I love it and it's one of my go-to round frames for my clients, especially if they're getting into round glasses because you just can't go wrong with this style. It's beautifully finished, really well polished, lovely to wear. And this is a great example of an investment piece because these are not cheap frames. But this kind of acetate frame will last you many, many, many years. Someone with a Norton frame is probably still going to have them five years down the line. And at that chance, you've got the opportunity to reglaze them and transform them into what we see here, which is the same model, but now with a bottle green lens. And they look ace as sunglasses. Such a cool transformation. And an easy one to do as well. You know, they just effortlessly transform from glasses to sunglasses. And I want to come back to the point that I made, which is that buying good frames is an investment. Yes, it might cost you more in the short term, but in the long term, when you've still got those glasses years down the line and you can still make use of them, it pays dividends. One of my favorite examples of how much a tint can transform a frame is the Gucci 1133, which you see here in black. And black frames are classic. It's a good color to choose because you can match it to almost any tint, similar to tortoiseshell actually. I love what they've done with it, with this pink tint that you can actually get stock from Gucci, but we can recreate that in prescription. Now this pair has also the Gucci lettering in pink as well to match, but I don't think that's essential. I think if you had these frames and you applied a tinted lens to them, it would still look just as good. I'm not gonna model it for you because it is a lady's style. Well, actually go on then, I will. I still think, I mean, it's probably not the frame that I would choose, but for a more feminine aesthetic, for a lady, this is a really cool, bold frame. And when you add the pink tint, it gets even better. Although I accept this would not be for everyone, but I think it's pretty awesome to be honest. And yeah, it, it just goes to show how much a tint can transform a pair of glasses. Now the first two pairs I showed you are very definite sunglasses, but this kind of tint you could wear all the time. It's perfectly visible, perfectly clear when wearing indoors. And often when you reglaze, it's not just about turning them into sunglasses, but maybe adding a little bit of a tint as I'm gonna talk about in a minute with some of my own pairs, just to transform them a little bit or just to enhance them really. The final pair I've got to show you are probably the most customized glasses in the world, or I say that in terms of the brand Cartier, because pretty much everybody buying Cartier glasses is going to change the lenses in some way, whether it's the shape or the tint. And in this case, I've done both. So this is the regular version of the 3765, a beautiful, sleek, 23 karat gold plated rimless frame. And I love the fact that it's metal and gold plating all the way to the end of the arms. This feels really premium to wear, like ultra premium. You feel when you're wearing them special. And that's kind of what glasses should do for you. I think with Cartier, you do get that effect more than with any other eyewear brand. But see how different they are with these green tinted lenses in a slightly more rectangular shape. So it's a little bit of a smaller lens with the tint Again, it's a complete transformation and rimless glasses can look good as sunglasses. In fact, I always think rimless glasses look better with a tint. I think that's especially true for Cartier and I think it's especially true when it comes to sunglasses. You know, as a sunglass, this has a lot more presence than it does as an optical. And I could imagine this lens with kind of a halfway tint where it's not as dark as this, but not completely clear. That might be the sweet spot for this kind of frame where you could still wear it every day. It's also a great example of perhaps photochromic lenses. You know, you could have a lens that went from clear inside 
to dark outside and really have the best of both worlds. Finally, I have two pairs of my own glasses, the Fitz from Anglo-American Optical and the Churchill from Walter and Herbert, both made in England frames, both cool classic styles that I feel are just getting a little bit dated and boring thanks to the lack of any kind of tint. At the time, I thought it was a good idea to get both of these with clear lenses, and I don't regret it, but I think it's now the right time to elevate these frames. I've checked every aspect of them over very carefully. The polishing is still intact on both pairs. They still have that lovely glossy finish. The hinges feel nice and smooth to open and close. The screws aren't loose. I mean, that would be easy to fix even if they were, but everything seems in perfect condition with these two frames, and I do try to look after my glasses. So it also happens, and I'm very excited to tell you that Zeiss have now released Clearview technology, which is a new lens design we're going to be covering in a follow-up video, and Photofusion X, which I'm told is the fastest photochromic lens in the world. And I need to test them out. So in the Churchill, I'm thinking of a Photofusion amber lens, probably a brown tint with the amber finish. Now, what is the amber finish? It has this kind of slight gold reflection when it's against the skin. It's very subtle. And when I'm outside in the sun, they're going to go to a full semi-mirrored sunglass lens. So they'll have that kind of gold reflection becoming more prominent in the sunlight. I'll probably go with a brown base tint rather than the gray that comes on this sample, just to tie in with the brown coloration on the frames. Or I might go for green for contrast, like we saw in the Cartier and the Barton Pereira. Because I think that is a really nice effect, actually, when you get the contrast between the lens and the frame. But I'm going to have a bit more thoughts on that, and I'd be really interested to hear your opinion on what I should do with the Churchill. I also really want to update my Anglo-American fits. I'm probably more excited with this pair because I feel like these are the perfect blank canvas for a tinted lens. And I'm thinking adaptive sun, gradient, potentially the blue. Because this frame is so neutral, it will go with any colour. And I don't currently have a pair of blue adaptive sun lenses. So that's a, a good contender. But I also think for the reasons that I just stated, the green is great as well. And green is a bit more of a classic color rather than the blue, a bit less quirky. I think it does tie in with the vintage vibes that the Fitz does have. But regardless of which option I choose, I'm gonna finish that off with a diamond flash coating, just to take a little bit of the edge off and also to give me more protection in sunlight. So what are adaptive sun lenses? Well, these go from a 75% to 25% gradient indoors or when it's cloudy weather to up to a 97% tint when I'm outdoors in the sun. So these give the maximum sun protection. These are the darkest sunglass lenses you can get and even more protective when we add that flash coating, which just reflects more sunlight away from our eyes. But more than that, I think it will just tone down the color to fit in with the kind of neutral aesthetic of these frames. Just watch what it does to the blue, for example. You can see here, without it, the blue is a lot more blue. It just tones it down a little bit. And again, I think that combination will work really well with the fits. But again, let me know your thoughts. Do you prefer the green or the blue? I'd be really interested to, to know. But I think that just about wraps it up for reglazing. And hopefully I have given you some inspiration on potentially reglazing some of your old glasses. And in cases where it isn't recommended, potentially averted a disaster. But have you ever reglazed your glasses? And what do you think about reglazing in general? Is it something you would consider? Or do you always want to buy a new pair? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you have enjoyed this video, give us a like. Please subscribe to the channel for more amazing eyewear content. I like to bring everything from our industry to you, whether that's frames, lenses, services like reglazing, and just general advice about your eyes. If you do subscribe, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks guys, bye bye.